What's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today we are checking out a very cool strategy game called Age of Z Origins. And throughout this video we will be deciding if this game is worth playing. A quick disclaimer that yes, this video is sponsored but I'm not getting paid for saying positive or negative things about the game. All they said is to give a try to Age of Z Origins and see if I like it. So just before we start, if you want to check this game out it's absolutely free to play on Android and iOS devices. Just use the link in the description and enjoy the game. Okay, so first of all, Age of Z Origins is a strategy game for iOS and Android. And using machine guns, missile launchers and other weapon systems, players have to defend their city from hordes of zombies, even other monsters and most importantly, other players. As this game is with multiplayer, it allows players to communicate via text and the game has even a pre-built translation system. So players all around the world can communicate in their own language. And with one click of a button, which is located in the top right corner, you can translate their message in English. To level up in this game, players use in-game currency to improve their buildings, weapon systems and other parts of the city. As well as to speed up the progression process, there is a premium currency which can be earned by playing or can be purchased from the in-game store. I personally played this game without spending a single dollar, but later in the video I will come back to this point and tell you if this game is pay to win. So, Age of Z Origins game story is that the zombie apocalypse threw humans into the dark ages. So now you are the light in the darkness and your mission is to revive the human civilization by raising massive armies, creating explosives, rescuing refugees and most importantly rebuilding your city. While we are talking about rebuilding a city, each player has one city where most likely you will spend most of your gameplay. And like in any other strategy game, you can do various things and earn resources. The main three resources is food, oil and gold. And by using them you can upgrade your city, but later in the game you get to unlock even more resources like steel, minerals and much more. At the beginning, all players start with the main hall and few buildings. The main hall is the main building which by upgrading allows other buildings to be upgraded too. So for example, if you have level 7 main hall, that means all your buildings can be upgraded to level 7. A big part about leveling up in this game is completing the story mode quests, gathering materials and playing a game mode called the tower defense. So let me quickly tell you about each one of them. So first of all the story mode quests can be found by clicking on this blue shiny icon and each chapter has about 5 missions. And missions are these small quests where for example you have to upgrade a specific building to level 11 to complete it or something else. And for completing the quest you will get smaller rewards. And when you complete all the missions in this chapter, you can click on get rewards and this will give you even more rewards. After completing each chapter, you will unlock more rewards and more missions to do, but as well a quick cutscene or like a small movie will play. So if you like to follow and learn about this world, you can watch it or just click skip and then start doing the next chapter missions. I mainly wanted to explain this feature of the game because for a new player it may seem complicated and at the start you may not know what to do or what to upgrade in your city. So the story quests help out a lot especially at the beginning to simplify the game. Then second of all you can earn and gather resources which later you can spend for upgrading your city, building an army and much more. There are many ways that you can earn resources. So for example you can complete the story mode quests and get resources. Then you can attack monsters by clicking on the world map, then clicking on this green rudder, then selecting the skull icon and down here you can select the monster's level you want to fight and then click go. This radar helps you automatically locate the closest monster to your city and you get to fight higher monsters for higher rewards. So first of all you kill level 1 monster and then to keep on unlocking more monsters you have to kill the lower level monster first. But while we are still at this radar there is another way you can gather resources which is by gathering. So instead of clicking on the skull you can click on this oil factory or perhaps a gold mine. And again you select the level you want to gather and you can send out your army to stay at the gathering spot for a few hours. And each hour your troops will be gathering your resources. And then lastly we have my personal favorite part about this game which is the tower defense game mode. So by going back to your city and clicking on this tower defense post you can select two game modes. As a new player you will not unlock right away the infinite zombie game mode. So we will just click for now the classic mode. And this is how it works. You start at level 1 and by getting at least one star in that zone you get to unlock the next level zone. So in each zone you will face up against multiple waves of zombies. And your mission is to place different towers in this dedicated blue spot 
pods. And after each wave and killing a lot of zombies, you will be rewarded with this blue resource, which you can spend to upgrade the tower or build more. At level 1 it will be easy, there will be only one entrance and one base that you have to protect, so you have to build towers so the zombies won't get to your base. But in later levels, this will be a lot harder with stronger zombies, more bases to protect and much more. In the top left corner you can see how much blue resources you have to spend. Then there is your base health. The more zombies get through your base, the lower it gets. And at zero you lose and there are two more useful tools to know. The 1x button indicates on which speed the zombies are moving. So I usually build all my towers and then let it play at 4x speed. And so this way you don't have to spend a lot of time watching the zombies and towers fighting, but instead it goes super quickly. And then the second button is play and pause. At any time you can pause the zombies to build or upgrade your towers or just think of a new strategy. In the next follow up videos about Age of Z Origins I will be making a specific guide for this cool game mode. But basically while you're waiting for your city to upgrade, this mini game is very nice small thing to play. You can improve your strategy each level and just get some cool extra rewards. Ok so with that said, there is so much more I have to tell you. Like we already discussed, you can raise your army and gather or attack other cities or monsters. And you can do that by unlocking these two factories and these two camps. And here you can make tanks, RPG launchers, you can recruit snipers and much more. Depending on which tier soldier you are recruiting or building, the time for him to finish will be quicker or longer. And after getting your soldiers, you can send them to battle. Or perhaps send them to the troop management building and increase their level. And upgrading your city by building more and higher level building should be self-explanatory. So each building does something for you. In one building you can heal your troops that just fought in the battle. Then in another building you can build farms so you would get automatically resources every few hours. Then as well in few other buildings you can make and appoint officers or even titans. Which is even another game mechanic that should be explained in a different video. So to not make this review video very long, these are the daily activities you want to do or you will be doing as an active player. So first of all each day you want to play the game to get daily rewards. The more consistently you play, the more rewards you will get. Then you always want your troops to be doing something, so either way go gathering, attacking monsters and things like that. Then of course you want to make your builder work 24-7, so you would be progressing and upgrading your city and buildings all the time. And then there are other things that you will want to do every day, so for example explore the ruins which have a separate level and by clicking on this trophy icon and then clicking on proceed to ruins, it will take you to the nearest place, which you can click, explore and then every day you can send your troops to retrieve refugees, which will make your prosperity level to go up and with that level here in the bottom you can see all the upgrades you will get for your city. And then I wanted to make this multiplayer and player versus player experience a separate part. Because I can imagine that to some players, this is the reason why you would want to play the game and this is where Age of Z Origins truly becomes very fun. So first of all, till you get to around level 10 city, you are fully protected and you can level up and progress at your own pace. And there is no rush if you don't have that much time to play. But then at level 10, your city shield drops down and you can get attacked or other players can attack you. So first of all, this game is split into into smaller servers and in the server every player and their city is randomly spawned across the whole world so you can attack each other and steal their resources and other things like that. The closer the player is to your city the faster your troops can travel and attack the enemy. As a beginner you will be given the city teleport so if you have friends or you want to join an alliance with other players then you will be able to teleport your city to theirs for free. And talking about alliances, you may know this more like as a clan or guild. So any player can create his own alliance and then invite other players. And each alliance can team up with other alliances. And you can do daily events where you have to kill monsters or you can create your own elite farms. So if you remember that we talked about gathering, well if you are in alliance you can make your own gathering farms where you can gain resources a lot quicker and in a bigger quantity. I personally played this game till level 10 or so by myself. But as soon as I found an alliance to join, this game became so much more fun. Because now you can talk through the in-game chat with other alliance members. And you can defend their cities and territories. And they can defend yours. Then as well, a very small but nice feature is that when you build a building, you can ask for help from your alliance members. And all they have to do is press a button to help and your building time will finish lower for 45 seconds for every member that helps you. So this way the game has made that you can speed up your progression and it doesn't cost you anything to help out others and for you to get extra help. Later down the line when you get to higher levels the in-game politics will come into play. So which alliance 
places you can attack, which not, and then from that I definitely can see even more fun to be had. So to finish off the video I want to tell you these two cool features, which I will be covering further in the next videos. But you definitely need to know about them and then I will summarize my whole experience of playing this game. So first of all you can click this arrow icon and a whole managing page will open where you can see what is going on in your city. And especially the more buildings you have and the bigger your city becomes, keeping everything in one place will be a lot more work. So this managing page gives us a very nice overview of everything. Then second of all when you click on this number it indicates on what is your power number. And the higher the number the stronger you are. And in this game it's very self explanatory. You can just simply click on each strength and see where your power comes from and how to increase it and this will help you in fighting against other players and defending your own city. Ok so now we have come to my last and final conclusions for this game. I used to play similar styled game few years back and when I tried this game out it brought me back to those days and I wanted to experience it again. The game itself is very self explanatory and you can progress at your own speed. You can easily play 5 to 10 minutes a day or spend hours upon hours because there are so many activities and events to keep you very busy. One of the strongest features about this game is the pvp slash multiplayer aspect where you can help out your alliance and together grow faster and stronger. And then the second feature is that if you don't want to you really don't have to spend any real life money to progress. Unlike other strategy games yes you can spend IRL money but it's not required and here in the top middle part you can see my gold amount and I've been getting it by just simply playing the game. There are two things that you will always want to have, which is the second builder and you can buy it for 200 gold for 24 hours. And just by playing the game for 10 minutes a day or even less you can easily make this amount of gold. And second of all there is this VIP section, which if you have it activated it speeds up your fleet speed. You can get extra free speed up time and much more. And again by killing monsters and getting the daily rewards, a bunch of times have got 24 hour VIP packs and other things like that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this game is not required for you to spend money. But if you want to there is of course that option to do so. If you spend real life money you can unlock faster buildings, get better officers and etc. So this game is definitely paid to progress faster. But the best part is that most of the things that other players can buy you can easily get by just playing the game. If you're looking for a very fun strategy game that can be very simple at start and that becomes more complicated for more hardcore players, a game where you can team up with other players or betray them, or that type of game in which you can simply farm resources and build one of the most futuristic cities in a world filled with zombies then this is the game for you. Like you can see from my review this game is very different from other strategy MMO games that I have played in the past and it encourages many players to attack the most powerful rank 1 enemies and both sides have a very good chance to win. So what are you waiting for? Try this game out by clicking the link in the description and by using my code KATE2. After you have downloaded the game you can redeem a very cool gift by going to the settings then click pack exchange and then enter the code. And with that said I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other questions about Age of Z Origins then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.